This is Tuesday, February the 1st, 2022. I have been away for a couple of weeks of vacation, and my joy to come back to you today with today's scripture reading, uh, which is Micah chapter 1 and chapter 2. The title of this devotional is The Prophecies of Micah. Well, who was Micah? Well, we know from the scriptures he was a contemporary of Isaiah, Hosea, and Amos. Actually, he's also quoted by Jeremiah later on. Now, we find in Micah chapter 1 what I would describe as the preface. It introduces us to who Micah was, also the reigns or the kings under whom he served. There were three kings of Judah who reigned over that nation during during Micah's ministry, they were Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. Now, we find the prophet here in Micah chapter 1 introduced simply as Micah the Morishite, giving us not only the prophet's name, Micah, but also indicating that he was a citizen of Morisha, or Morshagath, as you'll see in verse 14 of chapter 1. Now, where was that located? Well, it was about 20 miles southwest of Jerusalem. And so Micah's ministry base was in Judah itself, although his prophecies will cover not only Judah primarily, but but also uh, uh, Israel, the northern ten tribes. Now, in verses 3 through 5 of Micah chapter 1, you're going to see the warning of God's judgment. Now, we are, as we're reading these prophecies, as we've read in Isaiah, now we're reading uh, here in Micah, it is all leading up to God's great judgment. First of all, Israel, which will be led away captive by Assyria, and then later on, uh, Judah, which which will be conquered by Babylon. Now, Israel and Judah's appointment with God's judgment is drawing nigh. And the Lord instructed Micah to call upon all the people and nations of the earth to hear God's warning to Israel, to his people, because they had broken his covenant. That is, they had broken and disobeyed his law and his commandments. Now, Micah's prophecies of judgment, you're going to see in verse 1 of chapter 1, was directed primarily at Jerusalem, which was the capital city of Judah, and Samaria, the capital city of the northern ten tribes of Israel. Now, we would ask the question, why was the announcement of God's judgment focused on Jerusalem and Samaria? Why not some of the other cities? Well, the answer to that is because the capitals of Judah and Israel were not only the principal seats of the government, but they were also representative of the idolatry and the extent of wickedness of the people as a whole. Now, look with me in Micah chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. And you're going to see the specifics of God's judgment. Now, as you read chapter 1, you're going to realize that false prophets have proliferated in both Israel and Judah in Micah's day. Now, while Micah and the other apostles of the Lord warned the people of the imminence of God's judgment, there were prophets telling the people things that would please them. Well, Micah had the unenviable task, that is, to warn the people of Samaria that their fields and vineyards would be destroyed. The buildings they had constructed of hewn stones on hilltops would be raised to the foundation and the stones themselves rolled down into the valley. You see, the people had rejected God. And the idols they worship, we read in verses 6 through 7, God would crush or th by using Assyria as the invading army to destroy that nation and to take the people captive. Now, we go on in verse 9. Then Micah was also burdened with the responsibility of delivering a message of doom, not only to Israel, but also to Judah. Now, in verse 9, we read that he was moved to tears, and the prophet described himself as wailing or howling over the judgment that would befall his people. God did stop the Assyrians, we know for historically, at the very gates of Jerusalem. However, that stay of his judgment was only temporary. And for the sins and the wickedness of Judah, as we read in verse 9, had become like an incurable wound.
Well, Micah chapter 1, verses 10 through 15, records a lengthy lamentation by Micah. This time, not just Israel and Judah, but many of the other cities in that region. And he bemoaned that those cities would see and they would witness God's judgment against his people. And sadly, they too would share in the judgment. Micah chapter 1 and verse 16 foretells the captivity and the exile that would befall Israel and Judah. Now that brings us to Micah chapter 2. And there we have the prophecies concerning God's judgments against Israel and Judah, which continues in Micah 2. Now, Micah identified the sins of Israel that demanded God's judgment. You'll notice in chapter 2 and verse 1 that the leaders had planned all manner of wickedness. And in fact, in verse 1, it describes that they even laid awake at night plotting the sins that they would commit on the morrow, on the next day. In verse 2, they were greedy, not only covetous, a sin of the heart, but they also took possessions by using violence. The people, in verse 6, had rejected the prophets. And in verse 8, they had set themselves and made themselves the very enemies of God. Now here's a closing thought for you. Though Israel and Judah had broken covenant with the Lord, the Lord would not forsake them altogether. He remembered his covenant, and he promised that one day, verse 12, that he would assemble Jacob, and he would gather the remnant of Israel. You know, some of the Jews did return to the promised land after the Babylonian captivity, but it was just a small minority of those that had been taken captive. And so the regathering of God's people to the land is not yet fulfilled even in our day, even though there's a state and a nation called Israel. But God has promised that there is a day that the remnant of Israel will be gathered to the land. And when will that day come? The second coming of Jesus Christ will mark that time as surely as it is written in our word, so it will be. Be confident in the Lord, my friend. Let us learn the lessons from history that we will not, as a people, repeat them. God bless. Thank you for joining me. This devotional will be followed by many others that I have missed recording in the last two weeks. Thank you, and God bless. Bye-bye.